Thank you very much. Uh, on the brink of a network society, I truly believe that ICT is changing the way the world works. And I will talk about that in 14.57 minutes. Um, so I will start with three things. 20 years ago, three innovations, totally independent of each other, happened. The first GSM call was made. Secondly, Linus Torvalds released the first version of Linux. And in December, I think, 20 years ago, Tim Berners-Lee released the first version of the World Wide Web. Three totally independent innovations, and now it builds the foundation of what I call the network society. But we will not talk about technology, because I want you to meet three persons that has been experience the changing game, or will be the game changer in the future, or is the game changer already today. So let's start with um, this guy, Karanga Moses in Rwanda, in Malenge. I met him three years ago. He makes herbal medicine. <coughs> three years before I met him, his village got connected. At that time, he was making 3,000 Rwandan francs from his herbal medicine, and he had employed one person. Three years later, when we met him, he made 100 to 120,000 Romanian francs, and he had employed 44 additional people, thanks to connectivity, because he was an innovative entrepreneur. He started his homepage, he started his email address, he started to browse the internet to get new prescriptions, new recipes for herbal medicine. And more importantly, he reach, uh, reached a global market. So it was not a, just only a game changer for him. It was a game changer for his whole village because suddenly 44 additional people got a salary. And the village got connected and was much more independent of other means because he was a big company in that village. Let's move from Rwanda to Sweden. And you can see this guy and I have the same hairdresser. Um, actually, it's my son. Um, <coughs> at that time, he was 11 years old. Now he's 14. And I will tell you a true story about him, because I think it illustrates the expectations on the future. Three years ago, we were driving from Uppsala, where I live, to my mother's place. It's a four-hour drive. And after some 30 minutes in the car, he was sitting in the back seat of the car, he was picking up his Nintendo DS and started to press buttons. And then he said, Daddy, where is the Wi-Fi? And I said, son, are you stupid or what? We don't have Wi-Fi in the car. And then he said this to me, Daddy, you're working for Ericsson and you don't have Wi-Fi in the car. Really disappointed. And then he ended, you're such a loser. <laughs> <coughs> and I think this shows the new generation that will and is entering the market. They have expectations on connectivity, expectations on networking, and are expecting any screen to be connected to the network, to their social network, for communication, for playing network games, etc. So I think that will be an even stronger game changer in the future when this guy and his generation comes out in the marketplace, in the workplace, will change how businesses are done, and also what we as enterprises, we as companies, will or need to provide to actually make this guy happy. And move from Sweden to Russia, and then we will meet Irina. And she's a game changer already today. She has Lisa Alert, an organization of volunteers that finds missing kids in Russia. 2,000 people, volunteers, are helping her with the mobile phone and the internet to find missing kids in Russia. She does it for the good cause, and she's disruptive or changing the way police work needs to be done, and she's using the crowd, all the people, to actually find missing kids. I think this is a perfect example on how people are using the network and the internet and digital services to create new services in new ways that 
my generation didn't think about. So the number three is quite important because I think what is behind all these change? What is behind all these new possibilities, the game changers, and what is behind what will happen in the future? I think there are three foundations from a technical point of view that is the foundation for change. It's the broadband, always on behavior, always reach people anytime. The mobility factor, where you can reach information, send information, get communication going everywhere, because that changes the name of the game, how people perceive how to do things. And also the cloud, with the computing power, where services that was impossible earlier due to the technical standards in the mobile phone or the computer now is possible with the cloud computing power and also the storage and also the need for less investment to actually start a business or a practice because you can use the cloud as the platform. Um, but it's not only technology because with the global reach of the internet and the mobility factor, you can see that people are now doing things because they can reach an audience or they can reach collaborators that was not possible earlier. With the mobility factor, with the broadband factor and the cloud, suddenly you can reach new types of markets, but also you can organize capabilities in society and in business in a totally new way. And of course, that will be disruptive for old companies because suddenly one single person in Russia can change the way the police force needs to work, actually, regarding missing kids. Suddenly, herbal medicine companies in Western Europe got competition from one guy in Rwanda. And of course, that will change the game for business and how societies are working today, but that will be even more in the future. Number three, uh, the third three now. Um, I think it's not only about technology, and I think we, when we innovate, we, when we think about the future, need to have a new mindset, because now we have empowering consumers or empowering individuals that has the technological skill or don't need to have the technological skill to actually produce and create new types of stuff through the network. And they reach also new markets through the network. And also you have extending business. Now you can reach new types of markets that was impossible earlier, but also you can organize your production fa facilities in a new way. And for the first time in at least 20 years, now we have technology that is enabling that kind of behavior, that kind of new logic. Because with the cloud, with the broadband, we can see that technology now supports this behavior. I think that is why we are on the brink of a new society. We are only seeing the start of it. We are at the inflection point where we have installed a technological revolution big as, as big as the industrial revolution, the broadband. And now we see new types of companies, private persons, single persons, using the network in a new way that we couldn't foresee earlier. And also is disruptive for established business, changing the way we see on digital goods, changing the way where we see how should services be distributed and how should services and content be produced. Um, I think with this network uh, evolution, but also with the new types of technologies that we will hear about later today, Everything that can benefit from a network connection will have one, so we will see some 50 billion connected devices. And with the force of creative individuals, new types of businesses, we actually have opportunities beyond the imagination. We will see innovation beyond the imagination. We can foresee that maybe ambulances are connected and stoplights are connected. So if there is an emergency, the ambulance always gets green light 
thanks to connectivity, networking, and the technological evolution. And also, I think, on broadband mobility and cloud, I think all societal activities will use this technology to deliver and produce services to the citizens. And with the global reach and the distributed innovation paradigm that we are foreseeing now, I think we have opportunities beyond imagination. We can address local, regional and global challenges. Think about the first person you met in my presentation, Karanga Moses. Without networking, without internet, he would still be poor. So we can address poverty, we can think about new possibilities like having connected devices in the soil, and then we can address the water problem. We can optimize water consumption for farming. And we can also optimize fertilizing of the farmer's uh, job. So we get better goods and we are also addressing the climate issue. Think about buses being connected where they also get priority in traffic due to the congestion and also the environmental issues in the city where they don't have to stop and give out more <coughs> uh, CO2. But I think then we need also to address the global and the local and the regional challenges, but also we need to think about how can we make technology invisible for these people that don't want to cope with technology? How can we make user interfaces that address all persons on the globe so we get this inclusion? And how can we address the real problems with true innovation which addresses the global challenges in the world? Because with the networking effect, even small things make a difference. And I think that we need to have a vision about how could medicine containers be connected and how could we address the societal need for shorter uh, sick leaves. How can we address healthcare in rural areas with broadband, mobility and cloud to address that everyone is included in a good healthcare system? Donne talked about the educational system. It, of course, it needs to, it will transform. It needs to transform to meet the challenges of digital natives and the needs of digital natives. But also with the global reach of the network, how can we, for example, connect containers and get rural kids in poor countries to get the best education in the world? Because with the education, people can climb out from poverty, they can climb out from the environmental issues, they learn about how to treat the nature. So we can address so much with, for example, education. And how can we get not collecting information, but distributing information and knowledge to the borders of the network society? So we make a difference in the world. Because not only do we have the opportunity, I think we as people in the Western world have the responsibility to do it. Thank you very much.